Hello viewer, welcome back to Science Hub. My name is Gloria Kaleha I'm from, I'm, and I'm from Loreto Convent Valley Road. My name is Taskin Raza and I'm Masha Abila. Today we are going to talk about diffusion and the Graham's law. Diffusion is something that applies to our daily lives. For example, if I spray perfume from where I am, someone else in the other corner of the room is going to smell it. Why? Because the particles of the perfume will spread throughout the room and distribute themselves evenly. Therefore, we can say that diffusion is the process by which particles spread out from a region of high concentration to a region of low concentration. And we shall do an experiment. So she will raise the thistle funnel above. As you can see, the potassium permanganate is spreading from the point at which it was put first to the whole water, changing the water color from colorless to purple. So this can be explained like this. When you put potassium permanganate inside the water at that point, it is highly concentrated where it is. But as you release the thistle funnel up, it spreads. It's up. This is because the particles inside the potassium permanganate are in constant random motion. And as the thistle funnel was raised, they moved and spread from the highly concentrated area to the lowly concentrated area, which was the water, causing its color to change. There is yet one more experiment. Um, it involves ammonia and hydrochloric acid, and I'm going to draw it on the board. skin draws the diagram we can also be explaining the mechanism of diffusion in this experiment in terms of kinetic energy so diffusion as we said is the spreading of the heavier particles which are the particles of potassium permanganate when they are knocked by molecules of water yes which are almost which are always in constant random motion So that explains why the potassium permanganate color, the purple color will spread throughout the whole beaker because it will get knocked by the liquid molecules which are in a constant random motion. As you said uh, in the common syllabus that liquids have spaces between them, therefore they can move. So that is why the purple color is spreading gradually. Mm -hmm. Yes. So. The observations that are made in the glass tube that Taskin drew. Um, yeah. So the the 
molecules of ammonia are lighter than the molecules of hydrogen chloride, which is this one over here. They move through a longer distance. That's why at the end of the experiment, it will be noted that from here, they would have moved outside and you would observe a white fume on this side. Yes, a white fume. Then, a white solid is formed at the point of meeting where this gas, which is diffusing at a slower rate because it is heavier, here is where the white solid will form. Yes. So, as we are saying, this one diffused at a slower rate than ammonia. We can say it is denser than ammonia. Yes. And the white solid that will be formed is called ammonium chloride. Uh, because the reaction will be ammonia. This is concent it, this is soaked in ammonia solution, so um, it will release ammonia gas. So the ammonia gas will react with hydrogen chloride from the hydrochloric acid to form ammonium chloride. And we put the state symbols. And this is a solid, a white solid will be formed there, which is ammonium chloride. From the experiment, we can conclude that lighter gases diffuse at a faster rate as compared to the heavier gases. From that explanation, we can conclude that Graham's law states that under the same conditions of temperature and pressure, the rate of diffusion of a gas is inversely proportional to the square root of its density. And we are going to, to write the equations from the Graham's law. Taskin said Graham's law states that the rate is inversely proportional to density, square to the square density. root of its density, thank you, Taskin. So if we want to put there the equal signs, we are going to introduce a constant times constant, which we represent by letter k. So this is the same as k over square root of b. When you cross multiply, we get rate times the square root of d will be equal to the constant. That means that every time you multiply rate times the square root of the density, we are going to get something that is always there, a constant. It is a constant. So we can come up with the first equation is equal to square root root rate times square root of density. We can put the rate on one side. Let's say this is rate of gas one. And this is rate of gas 2. So, that is the first equation. And density is directly proportional to mass. Therefore, where there's density, we can put mass. So, so that is the first one. one here we had density on both sides of the fraction. So, and then we have another one too. This is because rate is given us one over time. So if we were to put here 1 over t, 1 over time of the first gas, or 1 over time of the second gas, we would get time over that. So to conclude the three equations, 
we can write this rate of diffusion of the first gas over rate of diffusion of the second gas is equal to the square root of the density of the second gas over square root of the density of the first gas and is also equal to the square root of the mass of the second gas over the square root of the mass of the first gas and is also equal to the time for the first gas over the time for the second gas. Okay, so I think I messed up here. It should be the other way around. So these are the equations. So you can compare this to this, this to this, because it's one. A series of questions will be done on the same. The first question. A given volume of gas A takes 15 seconds to pass through a small orifice. A similar volume of gas B, under the same conditions of temperature and pressure, takes 23.9 seconds. Given that the molecular mass of gas A is 28, calculate the molecular mass of gas B. So we have been given the time for gas A, the time for gas B. We've been told that the time for gas A is 15 seconds. And for gas B is 23.9 seconds. And then we have the mass of gas A, which we have been given as 28. So we write our formula. Rate of diffusion of gas A over rate of diffusion of gas B is equal to the time of diffusion the sorry. We'll use the equation that is the most appropriate. The time of diffusion of gas A over the time of diffusion of gas B is equal to the square root of the mass of A over the square root of the mass of B. So we substitute in the formula 15 over 23.9 is equals to the square root of 28 over the square root of the mass of B. So we cross multiply first. So 15 times the square root of the mass of B is equals to 23.9 times the square root of the mass of A, which we don't know. We're going to square both sides of the equation so that we get rid of the square root sign. So it is supposed to be. So fifteen times square squared times the mass of B is equal to twenty three point nine squared times twenty eight. Masha is going to calculate for us. What is fifteen squared? 15 squared MB is equal to? Yeah, so what is 15 squared? 225. 225 MB, mass of B is equal to? 15,993.88. So the mass of B will be equal to this divided by this, which will be? 71 grams. 71 grams. And that is the answer to that question. So we'll do another question. So I shall do another question, and the question is, Determine the molecular mass of the gas Y, which diffuses one and a half times slower than oxygen. Oxygen's relative molecular mass, relative atomic mass is 16 grams. So, we know that gas Y diffuses one and a half times slower than oxygen. So the formula is Ry over R of O2 is equals to square root of mass 
of oxygen over the square root of mass of y. Since we know the mass of oxygen is 32 because oxygen is written as O2 and one oxygen atom is 16 grams. So here it's two, two atoms. So that's 16 times 2 which is 32. So the mass of oxygen is 32 square root of 32 over the square root of my. And we have been told the gas y diffuses one and a half times slower than oxygen. So the rate is 1 over 1.5. Then we cross multiply. We square both sides to get rid of the square root sign. So this will become 1 over 2.25 is equals to 32 over m1. So my is Twenty-five times thirty-two, which will give us seventy-two grams. So the molecular mass of gas Y is seventy-two grams. So this marks the end of Graham's law under the topic of gas laws.